The Nazis are portrayed in media as zany but ruthless German soldiers. Some media are even inspired by the strange experiments that were taking place, leading to exaggerated super soldiers or monsters beyond belief. However, you'll be surprised to hear that in this case, the truth isn't too far from fiction. Here, we're looking at some of the disturbing experiments they seriously did during World War II. This video is not for the faint of heart. Twins by nature are scientifically intriguing, so much so that it caught the attention of the Nazis back during World War II. One woman by the name of Veryl Kriegel tells her story on BBC News. She describes first being shipped to Auschwitz when she was only five years old. On arrival, the men were separated from the women, so her mother, sister and herself were sent down to a different area where they would be yet again specifically pulled out of line by SS Captain Josef Mengele. He described Vera's mother as having perfect Aryan features, so he personally decided that her girls be selected for experimentation, given that they were twins. Though that was the decision that ultimately saved their lives, it would be the same decision that would leave a lifetime of horror to follow the girls for the rest of their lives. Supposedly, hundreds of children were used in Joseph Mengele's experiments. I found a record of a prison doctor and a bacteriologist who was forced to work for Mengele that there were 732 pairs of twins, said Professor Paul Wendling of Oxford Brookes University. Vera describes memories of Joseph killing twins with some sort of injection to the heart. Afterwards, he would begin experimentation with a corpse. She also describes that Joseph had a whole wall decorated in human eyes. Some children were even forced to do certain sexual acts, just for the Nazis' enjoyment. In an attempt to change the colour of Vera and her sister's eyes, Joseph Mengele forced them into a small wooden box for a few days where he would inject some sort of needle into their backs. The experiment was unsuccessful. She describes the injections as horrifically painful. This was just one of the many experiments the girls would face. In another experiment, the girls and at least 100 other twins involved were injected with a kind of bacteria that can cause noma. It's a type of disease that can cause boils in the mouth or genitals. Eventually, Joseph Mengele was arrested, but was mistakenly released by the US Army. After that, he was on the constant run until his death in 1979, where he died of a stroke in Brazil. As for Vera Kriegel, she now lives in Israel and still has nightmares of the ordeal to this very day. Of the 1,000 pair of twins experimented on, only 200 survived. Many experiments the Nazis conducted are described as chilling, but in one such case, the word has never been better suited. The Nazis wanted to find a way to deal with a person who was severely cold or frozen. Thus began the freezing experiments. These experiments were mainly held at the Dachau concentration camp. For those of you who are unaware of Dachau, it was a concentration camp originally made for political prisoners an estimated 188,000 inmates lived there, and another 31,951 was said to have been killed there. It was also one of the longest running camps, as it was active for almost all of the 12 year Nazi regime. In August of 1942, the freezing experiments took place at Dachau and were conducted for the German Air Force. One of the experiments had prisoners sitting in a bath of ice for over three hours without being able to move freely. In another case, prisoners were thrown naked outside in below freezing weather, where they would have to stay there screaming in pain as they slowly froze to death. Sometimes, when a prisoner's body temperature fell to 79.7 Fahrenheit, the Nazis would then try to thaw them by using hot water, warm sleeping bags, 
and even naked women forced to have sex with the men. It goes without saying that many of the prisoners involved with the experiments did not live. These horrific studies continued until May 1943. The lead Nazis that were in charge of the studies had to face trial for their crimes against humanity. Eventually, US troops arrived and surrounded the camp before killing many of the guards and freeing the prisoners inside. The Nazis wanted to see the effects of drinking seawater for about 6 to 12 days. This was a study made by the German Air Force and Navy to mainly discover the severity of drinking the ocean water. For those that are uninformed of why you can't drink seawater, it's because of your urine, sort of. Basically, your kidneys can only produce urine if the salt in it is less than seawater. So, drinking pure sea salt water would cause you to urinate more water than you drank, causing you to become completely dehydrated and even thirstier until you eventually die. The seawater experiments were held at the Dachau concentration camp. The subjects were given barely any food to survive, with lots of salt water to drink. Since it was their only choice of liquid, the prisoners complied. The study was primarily led by Hans Eppinger, who was an infamous Nazi doctor in charge of many horrific experiments. He was even flew out to treat Joseph Stalin in Moscow for an illness. Shortly after given the seawater, the test subjects began to feel the effects of dehydration, which can include fever, vomiting and diarrhea. Many of the subjects suffered from horrific hallucinations due to the lack of water. The subjects received either liver or spinal cord punctures to collect data. They were so dehydrated, in fact, that when the floors were just freshly cleaned, a big number of the test subjects began licking the floor in hopes of catching any fresh water in their mouths. All of the test subjects eventually died, either from dehydration or from being shot in the head at the end of the twelfth day. The Nazis viewed the experiment as a failure, but one that could possibly help them in the future. Hans Apinger committed suicide shortly before his criminal trial for his studies. He killed himself using a poison, though there are wild conspiracy theories that suggest he never committed suicide, he just escaped before trial. The bone grafting and nerve experiment is known as one of the most sickening experiments to ever be conducted in human history. So, it may not be a surprise to find out that it was conducted by the Nazis during World War II. The hope of the experiment was to see if they could result in the regeneration of muscle, nerve and bone. They also wanted to see if they could successfully transplant bone from one test subject to another. The experiments were held at Ravensbrück concentration camp. Ravensbrück was a very different camp compared to the other German concentration camps, due to the fact that it was made to hold just female prisoners. It was open until April 1945 and held an estimated 153,000 female prisoners. Some sources say the deaths at Ravensbrück ranged from 50,000 to 117,000. Either way, many lives were lost. At the end of the war, 16 of the SS guards at the camp were sentenced to death for their crimes against humanity. The person who was in charge of the experiments was Herta Oberhauser, a female physician who worked at Ravensbrück and the infamous Auschwitz. The experiments began by removing the bone from certain subjects and placing them in another. That, of course, failed. Then, they tried again with legs, shoulders, hips and arms. After moving the body parts from one to another, it once again failed. Here's a testimony from Dr. Zofia Maxka regarding the experiments. On the operating table, the bones of the lower part of both legs were broken into several pieces with a hammer. The muscle experiments consisted of many operations always on the same spot the upper or lower part of the leg. 
At each further operation, larger and larger pieces of muscle were cut out, once a small piece was planted into a muscle. During nerve operations, part of the nerves were removed. Amputations of the whole leg at the hip joint were carried out, or on others, amputations of the whole arm with a shoulder blade were carried out. Afterwards, the victims, if they still lived, were killed by means of EpiPan injections, and the leg or arm was taken into Hohenlikan. Most of the test subjects died or suffered the rest of their lives from some sort of brutal mutilation. Herzer Oberhauser was put on trial and was sentenced to 20 years in prison, but had it reduced to only 5 years. She was later released on good behaviour and secretly became a doctor once again for many years until a Ravensbrück survivor recognised her. She once again lost the licence and died in 1978. Here is a testimony from a survivor of the experiments, retelling their chilling experience. A blanket was put over my eyes, and I did not know what was done with my leg, but I felt a great pain, and I had the impression that something must have been cut out of my leg. Two weeks later, we were all taken to the operating theatre again, and put on the operating tables. The bandage was removed, and that was the first time I saw my leg. The incision went so deep that I could see the bone. Many unusual experiments took place during World War II, but these next ones truly take the prize for the most odd. 300 female prisoners at Auschwitz were artificially inseminated. Afterwards, the girls were then horribly taunted by the doctors, who were telling them that they were just inseminated with different types of animal sperm. The doctors also told the girls that they were going to give birth to horrid creatures that would tear out their insides. This, of course, was a lie, but one that I can only imagine left them psychologically scarred. Another, more unusual experiment conducted by the Nazis was the mustard gas experiments. Doctors porously exposed the prisoners to deadly mustard gas to see how they could treat the issue. For those unaware of the effects of mustard gas, it causes the victim's eyes to burn, turn red, and even go blind. It also caused the skin to become extremely itchy and then begin to bubble up with a yellow sort of blister. In all cases, mustard gas would almost always lead to a gruesome death. <laughs> 